Hi there! In the first part of this series, I have created a container image with my Scala web application, which I deployed to Azure Container Instances in the second part. In this part, let's explore Azure Web App for Containers. So Azure Web App for Containers is a part of something that's called Azure App Service. And Azure App Service is a platform as a service way of running web applications on Azure. And here, compute resources may be on shared or dedicated virtual machines, depending on the price and tier you choose. And it is currently operating on a fixed price, depending on uh, your app service plan. So it can be hourly, daily, monthly, and so on. And Azure Web App is a bit slower than container instances because the underlying VM needs to be built, so it takes a little more time. And there are also a little bit more steps to go through to create one. So I have a container image path, and I'm ready to create a web app. And for that, we need to create a resource group, an app service plan, and web app itself. So here is how you can create a resource group. AZ group create. Then we name it, indicate the location. And then we're ready to create an app service plan, which is necessary to indicate various options for a web app. So we can assign several web apps to a particular app service plan. So let's create one for our web app. AZ app service plan create command can help us with that, indicating the name of it, resource group, SKU, and also is Linux switch because web app for containers is based on Linux. Now we can actually create a web app, uh, AZ web app create, let's name it Scala Azure, resource group and app service plan that we have just created. And also, we need to indicate deployment container image name switch, uh, which is the path to your repo where you store your container image, which is AZ Scala that I created in the first part. And we see a lot of uh, information returned from uh, the API that tells us what properties our web app has. So now, after web app is created, we actually need to open up necessary ports to access our web server. And we can do it using Azure CLI. So az web app config app settings set command can help us do that. And the setting that we need to set this time is called websites underscore port. And we're setting it to 9000 because our actual web service is running on this port. And if we look at application settings page after that, we can see that our port settings are applied and they are already there. So now if we access it in the browser, we see that our app is deployed and everything works. We can also enable diagnostics uh, for the app to be able to check uh, container logs from the advanced CUDA console. So here we can just navigate to log files directory, and then within it, we'll see some files. We need to choose the Docker log uh, text file that we want to look at, and then uh, basically cat it to see that the pull was performed from our container registry and the container was started. Another really convenient thing to do is to make sure that changes that we make to our um, container image are applied to our running Azure Web App. So it's good to set up continuous deployment. And this way, when we push updates to our image, Docker Hub will notify Azure to update a web app as soon as possible. So we can set this up in Web App Settings. If we go to Docker Container page and turn CD on, and then copy the webhook URL, and paste it into your Docker Hub repo page under webhooks. So now if there is a push, uh, if there is a new image uh, in your repo, then web app updates will be performed automatically on push. Cool, now you know how to create Azure Web App for containers and set up webhook to trigger updates when there is a push to the container repository. And so far, we have used Docker Hub, but there is another option of where to store your images. Join me in the next video, where I will tell you about Azure Container Registry 
and when it is useful. Thanks for watching.